tests. Hello. <laughs> okay, so this is my first YouTube live stream, so hopefully everything is going to go well. Webcam, please focus. So, hi, welcome. Um, hi, I'm Lucy Lavend, and I'm going to be doing a live stream about improving 2D explosions, which is going to be a lot of fun. Yes, nice, you can hear me, even though the webcam still won't focus. <laughs> Perfect timing, but... Okay, so this live stream is going to be for the Goal Godot Jam, which is a jam, or well, an entire event that's organized by Adrian. He's also in the chat, Redefine Game Dev. And we have a bunch of hosts creating all sorts of content for the Godot community. And there will also be a game jam involved. So this is the website. It's looking really nice. And if you want to know more stuff, like in this live stream, Adrian went really in depth on everything around surrounding the jam and the event. And in here, you can also see all the stuff like the fundraiser. The fundraiser is a really important part of this project or this event, as you can also see in the corner of this live stream, I can't really point there. Um, you can see how much um, money has already been dat donated for Godot. There is an entire amount of money and it will be split up into parts. A part of it will be for the Godot or the Godot development. Then parts of it will be for the uh, creators, all the people that will be creating um, content for the, for the event. And a part of it will be for the prize pool, which you can win with the game jam. So, oh yeah, um, afterwards, this will, I will also upload this to YouTube and it will be saved. So mm, what we're going to be making, oh, I should maybe also show the, uh, the itch.io page. Here you can sign up, here you can read all the, the rules. Uh, the theme will be announced, not yet, but at the start of the jam. And here you can also buy the care packages, which will be for uh, which the, that money will go towards the uh, towards Godot and the fund I talked about earlier. Oh, hello, Game Endeavor! All the people! Yay! There are so many people. Okay. Um, oh yes, there is a Discord server. That's also really cool. But what we're going to be creating in this video is, I have it right here. This is the finished project. Is um, We will be taking this explosion. Oh, so, by the way, please let me know if the explosions are too loud. <laughs> this one is a little bit loud, maybe. But that's what we'll be creating. We'll have a look at how you can add those particle systems. There will be multiple layered and um, there's also an animated sprite in there. We will also have a look at the bloom. We will have a look at the screen shake and we will have a look at how you can create the sound effect, which is also very important for explosions. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Satisfying and fun to play around with. Duck Hunt Extreme. I mean, <laughs> blowing up ducks. Oh. Okay, let's get started, shall we? So I will have this project over here on my other screen so I can have a look at it. Mm. So there's an empty project. And oh, by the way, um, this might not be easy to follow, so it's probably easier to just sit there, chill out, and watch the stream and watch what I do. I will also upload it to YouTube, and um, then you can follow along. 
<laughs> so many people in chat. That's so cool. Um, oh yes, my hand is doing fairly well actually. I don't have to wear a brace anymore. So let's start off with going to projects, project settings as always, and let's set the window settings. Let's go for a width of 1280 and a height of 720. And then for, um, we're going to be making some more pixel art sized explosions. It won't be really um, true to the pixel art art form with, um, what do you call that, index palettes. I will go over that a little bit later, but let's set the resolution first. So for the actual width, we will take 1280 and let's divide it by four. And for the height, let's also divide that by four. And then under the stretch mode, let's go into 2D. For the aspect ratio, let's keep the height. Mm. Then also, let's go into the environment and let's pick a nice sky color, which will be uh, around here, a little bit of a light blue. Okay, let's get started. Sometimes I also have to read the chat, so... Uh... Oh yes, Matt is there as well. Hello, Matt. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be using uh, GPU particles, CPU particles, um, which is about the question about GLES2. I think you can only use CPU particles on GLES2. But yeah, we will be using... Oh yeah, I could do that. I could post it on GitHub afterwards if you guys want. <laughs> Let's create a main scene and uh, let's call it main. And this will be a scene in which we will be instantiating the explosions. Let's save it and let's create a new folder called scenes. And let's just throw it in there. Then let's create a new scene, a 2D node, and let's Where's pixelated Lucy? No, you have to deal with real life Lucy now. Sorry. <laughs> okay, let's call it cool explosion. Let's start off with, let me have a look at the example project. Let's start off with the dust particles. So to this, we will add a, we have another particles. You have CPU particles, but we need a regular particle study, which will be GPU based, as the tooltip says. Then let's go into the process material, material, and then let's add a new particles material. And as you can see, it's really tiny. <laughs> let's immediately change the scale up a little bit. Oop. Let's keep in mind also the resolution, which is this big box, so we don't make it too big. <laughs> yeah, I will upload it afterwards, so you can follow the stream later if you want to follow along. <laughs> Okay, now let's add some velocity. First, let's change the emission shape to a sphere. Yes, a sphere. And let's increase the radius. So, so that they will spawn in a random place within a sphere. Then let's go into time. Oh, that's for later. This time. Oh, there are two time uh, tabs. Um, let's go into explosiveness and turn it all the way up. Then we would need to change something about the gravity. So let's go into, where is it? We also need damping for later. Uh, gravity, there it is. Let's turn it all the way down. Well, for now, let's just change it to zero. 
And then we need to go into initial velocity. And let's increase the velocity a little bit. A tiny amount. Because the smoke will spawn and then it will move upwards. So we need to change the direction as well. Uh, direction. Let's change that to zero. And I think this should be minus one. Let's increase the amount to uh, 16 or so. Mm, what's next? The shape. I think that let's increase the scale a bit again. And this is, stream is also good. Oh, hello. <laughs> Welcome. This stream is going to be a lot of me tweaking small things and just messing around because that's kind of what uh, creating particle is. Particle. When I made an explosion, it looks more interesting when the explosiveness is closer to uh, 0 0.9 rather than 1. Huh? Yeah, we could try that later, because then some extra particles will spawn after the initial explosion. That could be cool, yeah. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> welcome. So for now, let's um, increase the initial velocity even more, more. So now they will shoot out in this direction, but we want them to explode outwards and then slowly come to a stop. For that, we're going to be using damping. So let's in turn damping all the way up. And let's increase the damping randomness a bit. <laughs> what is particles if not tweaking all the things? Yeah, yes, it's a lot of tweaking and a, a lot. <laughs> So what's next? We have some particles. We might want to decrease the initial velocity a little bit. Okay, nice. And throw some randomness in, randomness in there as well. Okay, nice. Then let's change the color. In the color, we'll add a new gradient texture and a new gradient. Okay, well, we want it to fade to gray, and then we want it to fade out. What, one thing you could do here to make it more... Uh... Oh, sorry. Yeah, right. I should move my camera. Forgot about that. Whoop. <laughs> so, is that better? Okay. Mm. One thing Game Endeavor shows in his videos is that you can have a harsh transition between two colors if you put two uh, points really close to each other. And this way you can add multiple colors from your color palette and make it more fit within your game world and the palette of your world. But for this tutorial, I am not really going to care about those restrictions. That's also a different art style, I guess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it on pure white first. Because the initial flash flash is really bright. <laughs> and then I'm also going to open up the the example projects real quick again and check which colors I had here. Um whoops. Um, yeah, okay. So here I had it go from... Uh, I should just show you guys. I had it go from uh, white to a bit of an orange, then or more yellow, and then orange, and then gray for a big chunk, and then it fades out. Oh yeah, we shouldn't forget the, the, the opacity over time. Uh, whoops, let's go back. Let's go in here and let's tweak this one to a more orange or a yellow color. Maybe a little bit more towards orange. 
And then let's put another node right here. But let's pick a darker orange or a more, more saturated orange. I made a jam game with almost only particles with Godot, actually. Oh, that sounds cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, Godot particles are great, but mm, they're missing quite a bit of things. Mm. One thing I really missed is, oh, I pre prepared some videos for you guys. <laughs> I wanted to show is that, for example, the explosions in Half-Life 2 are really quite nice because it starts with a really bright flash, which we're also going to be doing, but it also starts with these, um, these spikes or well, spikes, sparks and debris spiking out. Maybe I should set up some, um, some moderators for the chat next time, or I can do that right now. Meh. I guess just ignore the people. <laughs> so yeah, these spikes. I wanted to make these spikes. Yeah, Matt and I played Half-Life and it was fun. But um, these are quite hard to make because if we skip through this, go through this frame by frame, you'll see that it's initially a really um, elongated sprite. And then it move out, moves outwards, and it will restore to its original position. Actually, now to look at it, it almost looks like this sprite, but then a really small version. And then it just fades out. Another example is from this really great video by Video Game Animation Study. Uh, he has an entire video about dedicated to um, video game explosions. And he also talks about the the explosions in Bomb Chicken, which are just really lovely. That looks really cool. A little over time. Oh, this is a different game. Um, he also talks about the explosions in Wind Waker, which are just so good. They're a little bit less explosive. They feel a little bit more fluid, if that's a thing. Compared to with bomb chicken, Again, bomb chicken. Explosions. So these bad boys are these are just so good. There are so many layers to them. Exceptional, which they do. I mean, so he so talks about the blast radius. Let me skip uh, through it. Yeah, the explosions and bomb chicken also have. I can't really point at it. Sorry. <laughs> um. Of these spiky parts, which are basically the same, oh, whoops, are basically the same as these spikes. Metal slug explosions feel. I think Dan also talks about metal slug explosions in this video, but those are a lot more, um, not not less juicy, but I think. But hey, that's fine. It's functional. I'm just going through someone else's video, but he really has some really great examples. Yes, these explosions are also really nice. But what these mainly do is create a lot of volume and then slowly disappear. Ah, okay. I'm really new to streaming on YouTube, so if this goes wrong, whoops. <laughs> um, but what we're mainly going to draw inspiration from is the bomb chicken explosion. I think he also might talk about bro force. You guys should just watch this video. It is really great. <laughs> So let's go back to our example, <laughs> our project. It's not really looking like those explosions yet. But what we're going to do is add a gray here. 
dark gray. Let's add another dark gray. And another one at the end. And on this one, we will turn down the opacity. But as you can see, they all disappear at the same time a little bit. Oh yeah, it's Godot 3.3.2. <laughs> uh, what we want to change is the lifetime randomness. Where is it? It's under time. Lifetime randomness. If we change this up, you will see that some will disappear later and when some will disappear, disappear earlier. But they will all, due to the explosion, explosiveness set to one, they will all, wait, all, all of them will start at the same time and with a white color. Let's make that a little shorter. Okay, so this is looking nicer already. But the thing we need to change is the sprite, because right now it's just a square. Let's make a new sprite in a sprite, shall we? <laughs> so for this, let's go for a resolution of uh, let me check what I had in the other project. It looks to be eight by eight or something. Blah. Let's go by eight by eight. And then let's just, if we have the brush tool and oh, those are colors. With the plus and minus keys, you can increase uh, size the brush and let's just stamp it so we have a little circle. And then let's hit Control Shift Alt and save. <laughs> it's a long well, what you can also just do is go to uh, file and export. And let's export it into the 2D explosions live stream and let's create a new folder. Let's call it sprites. And let's call this dust. And let's hit export. And now in here, we have a sprites folder. We also want to change the import settings to be for pixel art. So let's set it to pixel art. Hit re-import. Let's uh, click the presets again and set it as default for the, for the next textures. Are you also gonna show the 3D explosion? Um, not in this live stream, but at the end of the live stream, I will go over some uh, 3D explosions I've made. <laughs> so, oh, also let's hit save before we uh, lose any progress. Let's just call it cool explosion. Sure, whatever. <laughs> okay, so now we have the sprites. Let's go back into our particles. Let's also rename this to dust. And in the textures, let's just drag in our dust texture. And that's really big, so let's decrease the size. Scale, let's make it go down. And then we're going to add a skill curve. For that, let's go into uh, here and create a curve texture. And on this curve texture, we will start at one and we will just drag this down to zero. Let's add a new point by right clicking and adding a point. And hmm, that looks about right. How many particles do I have here? Oh, that's 64. That's a lot more than 16. Let's have a look at what 32 looks like. And maybe let's decrease the damping a little bit because these particles are going up a little higher. Maybe we need to increase the initial velocity then. Ah, yeah, that makes a lot of difference. Okay. Let's tweak up the damping again. Okay, let's also... 
Oh yes, don't forget to use these explosions in your go to do jam entry. That would be great. <laughs> Yay, nice. People are already working on like, improving their explosions. It's great to hear. <laughs> so, okay. I think that is fairly close to what we've got over here. Looks a little different though. Maybe... The scale randomness. Um, let's close this curve texture. Yeah, that does seem to make a difference. Let's increase the size a bit again. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Let's add a little bit more white. Uh, whoop. Or maybe less. A bit of a bright spark, just like in those Half-Life explosions. Okay, now we have the dust particles. Let's add another um, particle system. Particle study for the debris. The brush, the debris. This already looks somewhat similar to what I've done for the for Tree Invader for the Godot Jam Go Godot Jam One. Just slightly more highlighted. Nice. <laughs> I'm gonna grab a drink real quick. Yes, yes, we're like I've created this explosion before, and now we're just recreating uh, that explosion, and you can see all the parameters and why I pick those things. If you have any questions about why I pick a specific parameter to tweak, or or any questions in general, feel feel free to ask. Yeah, I should I post them in the chat? You want references? This, there is a description, but I can't tweak that right now from OBS. But what I'm gonna do is I will also put the the video by Dan. This one with all the this, this one has so much explosion references. From Mega Man to Metal Slug to even the slow my guys. And I have this uh, really old GameSpot video about... <laughs> it's kind of cringy, but uh, about all sorts of explosions. French, debris, debris. Oui, oui, debris. Yeah, I can do that after the stream. Okay, let's continue, shall we? Mm. Let's go into process material again, and let's add a particles material. And immediately let's, immediately let's change the scale to make them easier to see. And let's also increase the scale randomness immediately. So we have that done. Oh, I can give links in chat. Oh, I can't use uh, OBS to chat, though. <laughs> okay, um, where are we left off? Where are left? <laughs> Let's tweak the color immediately. No, rather, maybe we should add some uh, velocity. So the emission shape is a point and direction, we want it to go, uh, yeah, let's make it go up. So minus one on the Y. 
Hey, Oscar and Jonah. <laughs> so let's change. Oh, let's keep the gravity at this, but let's change the initial velocity. So it. Whoa. That's really sensitive. Okay, so that's a good start. Let's increase it a little bit. Okay, that's. It needs more gravity. So let's do this times three. And let's tweak the explosiveness. Uh, where is it? Time. Explosiveness. Yay. Okay. And also let's tweak under the other time tab or drop down menu. Let's change the lifetime randomness. And now we have some debris. Maybe we could increase the lifetime a little bit. Uh, two by two. Mm. Let's go for a 1.5 or something. Benjamin says, God, I have always been terrible with particles. I also come out so basic. The explosions look great when you end with a dark color. It's explosions or well, any particle, it's just so much tweaking, but colors are so important. And momentum, color and momentum are just, for example, right now the momentum also feels a bit weird on the, um, on the debris. Well, we will tweak that. Let's first tweak the color. Let's add another gradient texture. And Let's, what if we just flip these around like this? We'll also start with a bright color. Mm. So every, maybe you, I can just hide the dust for a bit. So they should all start with a white color. But due to the lifetime, some stay white for longer than others. Hmm. Uh, Tio says, one thing I would like to know, could you, could you, for example, randomize the white squares to something? Oh, use a different texture. Um, I don't think you can do that easily with the standard parameters, but there are um, particle shaders, which are so cool. I've never really used them before yet. But uh, Play with Versifer is a channel that has some really cool uh, particle shader tutorials. Basically, if you create a particle shader, you can tweak everything about it, all the colors, but through, um, through shader code, which gives you so much more, um, uh, yeah, you can, <laughs> you can change everything. Mm. By the way, can someone say how long I've been streaming? I don't have the stream open. <laughs> but yeah, the answer is particle shaders. They're cool. And I would still, I would love to learn more about them. Mm, let's change down, let's tweak the lifetime. Okay, yeah, that's nice. Now they're a little bit more uniformly white, they, 35 minutes, 34 minutes, <laughs> 30, it's getting less and less. <laughs> okay, um, let's compare this to the debris of me over here. Oh, yes, yes, let's, let's add some, um, some rotation to them. That's also fun. Um, not radial acceleration, then it will speed over speed up over time. 
but we need to go into angular velocity and let's increase that and let's also bump up the randomness all the way nice let's in the color let's also make them fade out so let's add two points over here and then the last point let's turn the opacity all the way down maybe let's keep this one on black let's tweak this a little bit over here Oh, someone says, I've only written one particle shader before, and they're really, they're so sick because I managed to render 4 million grass at 60 FPS. That is really cool. That's awesome. <laughs> I'd love to try that. So with particles, you have a shape, which is a point. They all spawn, spawn from the center right here. Then you have a spread. If you set this to 360, they will go uh, all directions. Which also looks kind of cool, to be honest. Maybe we should keep, keep it this way. Uh, maybe it's a bit, bit like this. If we turn it to zero, they will all fire upwards. Yeah, we could try that and as, as the origin um, a box. And if we... Oh, that's, that's in vector 3. So hmm, I'm just going to keep it at points for now. That's a little bit easier. Because that, that is where the, the most powerful place of the explosion is, in the center. <laughs> okay, we now com combine these. They won't play at the same time. So, um, like what shall we do next? Should we test it or should we add the last part? I guess we should just add the the little animation, the flash sprite. To do that, let's add an animated. What does the spread do? Well, basically, you have a point where the particle starts. I could. Draw this in paint. <laughs> you have a spot where the particle starts. And then you have the direction. The direction is minus y, which is upwards. And then the spread is basically how far outwards to both sides the, the particles are going to start. So if we set it to, um, one, I think, 180 degrees, it will spread within this range. So it's going to go here, go, go here, but it can't go here because that's past the range that we've set. So the spread is at 70% or 70 degrees. Wait, let me tweak some things. If I set this to 100... Oh, 180 is the max, of course, because that's half a circle. It's from this to there. So the explanation... This explanation is for 45. No, halfway there. 90, 90 degrees. That's it. <laughs> so let's keep it this like that. And let's create a new sprite for the, the initial flash. Can it work in bullet hell kind of thing? Mm. Yes, it's 180 degree to, to both sides. So together they make uh, 360 degrees. For bullet hell, mm, maybe these would be a bit um, taxing on the GPU, because we're going to add an animated sprite um, and two particle systems. So mm, maybe these explosions are better off for um, 
like grenades and stuff, that's not gonna ex explode a lot. Or maybe you, you are going to have a lot of explosions in your game. Let's set the new sprites to 64 by 64, maybe? Okay, and now let's increase. You can, in a sprite, you can hold control and scroll to make the, make the brush size larger. Let's also tweak the, let's turn on the symmetry, which is not turned on by default, I think. You have to t turn on the symmetry options. Let's put a circle in the center, like that. Let's turn this into a little animation. Maybe let's make just make the circle a little larger, like that. That's really large, maybe. <laughs> oh well. And then let's make this a little smaller. Let's go to the line tool and let's add some big spikes. This is going to be a really large splash. So with the line tool, we just add a couple of lines. And then let's hit Alt and N to create a new frame. On that frame, let's just delete everything and let's um, this little button is for onion skinning, so we can see the previous frame. Let's add another, oh, let's grab our brush again and let's add another circle, but a smaller one. And with the lighten tool, let's create some spikes again, but well, maybe in a different direction. From the center outwards to, well, you can choose where you want them to go. Maybe something like this. Mm -hmm. And then let's, wait, let me have a look at the frames I've done for the, the other one. I've had this, then this, oh uh, yeah, and then we tweak the color. So let's Hit Alt N again to make another frame. Oh, let's erase the center part and little bits of the lines. Maybe that's a little bit too much. So, whoops. And let's give them a color, like orange. We can do this with the bucket tool. Directional explosions are great for when something is just when something just gets shot. The explosion would come out mostly in the direction of the shot, which in that case looks better for the 360 degree explosion. Which is true if you're making a really. To be honest, it sounds quite fun to make a really over the top duck hunt game where you can use explosives and grenade launchers and. <laughs> That would be great. Okay, now we have three frames. As you can see, it looks awful. <laughs> um, let's add another frame, shall we? Let's erase this part, this part. This. Maybe what we can do is just erase the entire thing and use the line tool again and go into more orange color and decrease the size and make a more th uh, a thinner line. Like this, and like this. Oh, and one more right here. It's also good to make them extend a little bit outwards. So, four ducks, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Well, whoops, there goes my... Okay, this really doesn't look great. 
Maybe if we just change this one, let's... Whoops, let's rotate it by... Eh, something like that. Let's export this. So we can just continue. Let's, oh, let's hit Control Shift Alt and S again. <laughs> no, everything. And let's call them Sparks. And we're not going to save them as a GIF, GIF, GIF file. Some, someone is going to murder me for saying GIF, GIF. I usually say GIF, but. Someone on Reddit said it's pronounced like gift without the T. Let's change this to a PNG file. Let's create a new folder and let's call it Sparks because we're going to be exporting them as separate files. Hit OK. OK again. And let's hit export. Oh, F7 for the preview window. Ah, nice. Yeah, also this little button over here. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go back into Godot. And now we have all the sparks. The right but we're pronoun Matt, thank you for the very helpful comment. <laughs> okay. Let's add an animated sprite, shall we? And in the frames, let's create a new sprite frames. And then select all those sprites and dump them in there. Let's rename the animation to explosion. Then let's turn off the looping property. And let's change the, let's see about 20. The only pronoun shit. Come on guys, that's me. <laughs> I'm being bullied in chat. <laughs> um, okay, let's set the speed to 220 um, frames per second. Okay, now we have this. Um, let's add a script to the explosion. I am never going to use that word again. <laughs> Please. Okay, um, let's create a new folder. Let's call it scripts because planning your project with folders is important. Let's hit create. Let's delete all this garbage. <laughs> Elemental magic, the art of special effects animation by Joe. Joseph Gilland is a good resource to learn to make these kind of animations. Ooh, that's an actual useful comment. <laughs> I'll have a look at that later after the stream. Thank you for the suggestion, Philippe. Mm, where do we left up? Um, Function ready. You guys are really distracting me. I should add moderators. I don't have a single. I shouldn't say that on stream. Okay. Um, in the ready function, what we want to do is on the animated sprite. Or well, let's not call it animated sprite. Let's call it sparks. And we want to call the start function. No, the play, sorry. The play function. And let's let it play the explosion animation. And for the other two particle systems, let's also turn of the on turn on the one shot property. So for the debris dot one shot equals true. Let's copy that and let's also do that for the 
for the dust. Philippe. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Half of the chat is this debate about the word that I am not going to pronounce. <laughs> oh, now we also get to add the, the, the glow. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Mm. Oh, by the way, it's also so cool to see the, um, the funds go up in the corner of the stream. It's, when we started, it was someone somewhere in the three hundreds. It's also at, already at four hundred and nineteen dollars for Godot. This is really great. <laughs> How can he not pay attention to something that this film filled my entire chat? <laughs> yes, we're going to be adding some glow. Some people don't like it for pixel art game. For pixel art games. Um, but it really helps with that extra punch. Okay, so people pay attention. <laughs> let's go into, let's add a world, and, world, world environment node. And let's add an environment in there. One thing is important to set for 2D Glow is the um, mode, and then we need to set it to canvas. Then let's turn just let's just turn turn on Glow. The default value should be fine. And then in the scenes folders, let's add the cool explosion real quick to test it. And uh, what we're going to do is in the explosion scene on the Sparks sprite, we're going to be changing the visibility and then the modulate color. Let's turn on. <laughs> okay, I'm getting distracted. <laughs> Oh, this maybe it would also be really cool, but maybe kind of taxing for the CPU and GPU. But if you add a light to the, honestly, there are so many creative things you can do with explosions and lighting, that ah just go wild. But what we are going to be doing is in this color, we're going to turn on raw, and then we are going to just tweak up all these values a little bit, so they're still white. But they're above um, the range from 1 to 255, which is out of that color's standard color size. So anything above that is considered high dynamic range. And a high dynamic range color is one that's above 255, or in shader code, it's from 0 to 1. It will be above the HDR limit set in our or the HDR threshold. So the HDR threshold is one. So anything that has color above one, the maximum value, will get glow. And why are we not getting glow? Maybe I need to tweak it even more? Or have we saved it even? Oh, oh yes, there it is. You can see the glow. As you can see, it really makes a difference up here. And the world environments, let's also add, turn on these. This will look nicer on uh, emission time, yay! Uh huh. This will lo look really cool on a dark background. But for now, we are just going to keep it this sky color. Now it's finally time to actually try it out. Shall we? <laughs> let's add a script to our main node and let's organize this neatly and put it in the scripts folder. 
and let's hit create. And then there are two ways of doing this. Uh, we could do it in the input function, or we could do it through the um, through the process function. Hey, what kind of explosion? Can you make like spark and electricity? That's the thing I talked about, tried to talk about earlier. The uh, sparks are really quite hard to make with Godot's particle system, because trails are rather difficult to do in, well, just really not that great. You have in the particle systems, you have the um, trail property to which you have, like, if you want four particles to trail one particle. So if you set the divisor, divisor to four, that will mean that you have one particle and uh, three of the same particles will follow the particle. So you have to, you have to increase your particles amount times four. Lucia, are you going to cover the S effects, the sound effects? Yes, we're also going to be talking about the sound effects. But maybe I need to hurry a bit up, because I have no idea for how long I've been streaming. <laughs> Can someone give me a heads up again on for how long I've been streaming? <laughs> the visor. The visor is pronounced right. Right? Yeah, they're out of sync, but they will be when we um they will be in sync when we spawn them. Oh yeah, that was what we were working on. Um let's add the function for um uh inputs. And I'm just gonna put this over here. Uh Fifty-seven minutes, almost one hour. Huh? <laughs> Time goes so fast when you're streaming. But I'm also kind of already feeling it in my throat. <laughs> okay, in here, we're going to be asking if the event is of the type input event. Oh. Input, e input event mouse button, and then we're going to check if the event dot button underscore index. You know what are you complaining about? There is. Okay. You could use animated textures to make it look like electricity. Oh huh, yeah, you could. Um, Play with Versifer has a really cool tutorial about uh, making particles follow a path using the uh, particle shaders. That's also a really cool way of doing elect electricity. You can use an animated texture to make anything look like anything, really. Yeah, if you're just going to draw the animation by hand, you could also do that. <laughs> okay, I'm getting distracted again. Um, if event is button index, of event dot button index is equal to but button underscore left. Why is Gideo complaining? Please. Um and 
of statements. Oh, whoops, I am forgetting an if statement. <laughs> oh, sorry, the entire chat is screaming like an if statement, please. <laughs> oh, I should pay more attention. I'm sorry. Yeah, I also need to learn particle shaders. They sound so cool, but I haven't tried them yet. Mm. Okay, let's keep going. I'm sorry, maybe I should just copy and paste this. I'm <laughs> this is not a programming stream. So if we uh, press a button and the left button is pressed, then we're going to create an instance of the explosion. And that, ex that instance of the explosion is going to be an instance of that scene. So let's create an unready bar um, cool again. And we will set it equal to preload and then the cool explosion scene. And the cool explosion we're going to instantiate. So we're going to create an instance, put it in that variable, and then um, set its global position equal to the event dot position, which is uh, a mouse click. So it will get the position of the mouse click. And then let's just add child, add it to the scene. I think that's about it. Oh yeah, maybe you should do a particles, particle shader video. That would be cool. I would watch, yes. Yes, particle shaders are in Godot. They're so cool. <laughs> I keep, we keep talking about how cool they are, but most of us just haven't tried them yet. But in new blog posts on the Godot website, in the news section, they also talk about all the new features. Um, and you can use visual shaders for particle shaders in uh, Godot 4.0. Yeah, Play with Firstware has some really nice tutorials on it. Oh, maybe we need to act, add the explosion instance. Oh. Okay, this should be right. Let's hit F5 and let's select our main scene. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's uh, okay. That's a good start, but the thing doesn't disappear. Let's go into the sparks and as a last frame, let's hit this button. Um, insert an empty frame. Does it disappear then? Yes. Yay, our explosions are already looking nice. Matt says, honestly, I didn't know Guido had particles in the first place. <laughs> yes, it has. <laughs> okay, yay, particles. But does it start right? Yes, it starts all the way white. Now in our main scene, let's add a camera. 2D. And let's just set the anchor mode to drag top left so it's more centered. Maybe we need to tweak the project settings a little bit because the explosions are really big for what we have right now.
Um, hey Lucy, will you be posting the stream on YouTube? Yes, I will be posting the stream on YouTube. I could make a more concise video about it. That, but they always take so much editing. That is kind of my thing. Like the past few weeks, I've mostly been live streaming. Oh, wait, wait, I am also on Twitch when, um, I, the past couple of times I've tr streamed with Matt, the one and only Matt in the chat. <laughs> And on Twitch, my streams are just more for fun and and <laughs> we just really mess around with, with drawing, game development, and mostly game development frustrations, like rigging 3D models and stuff. Now we have a cross-shaped hit effect from the montage part. Yes, it kind of looks like that. <laughs> it's li literally uh, twitch.tv slash Lucy <laughs> Okay, yes, it does look like a hit marker. I am not very happy with that, I think. But for now it will do, because it's a replacement for those... Um, things I've talked earlier about. Those big sparks that come out and have really long, um, yeah, what you see right here. Maybe we could add multiple ones. You know what? Let's just do that. Let's pick the color. Let's grab the line tool. Let's increase the brush size and let's add a couple of more lines. And then let's pick this color. Do this and this. And this. Wait, did I miss a pop up? <laughs> I heard something, but. Good night, person with the latter age. <laughs> okay, now we have more sparks and let's also do that for the smaller line. Is that, are those my Twitch follow? Ah, oh, that's Twitch, of course. <laughs> well, thanks for <laughs> following me on Twitch. <laughs> oh, that's from Breath of the Wild. I just found it on Streamlabs. <laughs> it was kind of funny. <laughs> those are Twitch. Yes, those are Twitch follow notifications. Okay, let's export this again. And now we have more sparks. And hopefully it looks less like um, those MLG montage. Ooh, hmm. Let's do something cursed and let's increase the size of uh, of those sparks. Woohoo! No. Oh, that's... Oh. <laughs> I think this is about right for now. Maybe if we just change the... Zoom two, two. Oh, maybe we need to also make, need to make it a current, uh, current camera. Oh yeah, that's the thing, the offset. That's kind of a problem right now. That's a, that's a problem with the, um, the input function we're using. <laughs> All that Twitch followers, yay. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. That's a problem with the 
event position, can we get a global? Um, yes, screen shake is next. But can we get a global position for the event? I am not sure, and I'm going to really quickly look that up right now. <laughs> All the Twitch follows. Yes, oh, that's also a thing. The Q3, after the particles have been fired, um, I'm going to add that afterwards and do that with a timer because um, it's also the issue of if you destroy the particle when the um, when the particle is over and the but the sound effect hasn't finished yet, the sound effect will cut off because you will destroy the object that the uh, audio emitter is attached to. But it could also be the other way around. If your sound effect is too short, and you will end it at the end of the sound effect, and the, the particles will just disappear too quickly. So I usually just add a timer of about five seconds. Well, five seconds is a little long. Three seconds or so? Yes, what I was looking at is the problem right now is that we spawn it at the event of position, but it is not taking into account the um, zoom of the camera. What we need is a global position of that event. Can we get that? I just found this channel, content looks great. Keep on coming. Thank you, that's really nice. You know, maybe let's just have that problem, save the problem for, an for another time. This is what we've had, what we have so far. Screen shake, screen shake. Let's add screen shake. <laughs> Let's add a script to the camera. Let's throw it in the scripts folder. Whip to up. Let's delete the default garbage. <laughs> and you could multiply the position by two. More of a hack though. Yeah. Mm. What we what would would have been better is to use the in Get global mouse position. Wait, can we can can we just use that in the input event? Wait, yes, I think you just fixed it. <laughs> Phil is going to fix it. Um, will this work? It does work. Read, yeah, let's go. <laughs> nice, you have a little more more room to see the particles. Screen shake time. Okay, I am lazy and I literally just Googled um, Godot screen shake. And then this person came up, this, this script. It works like a charm. And I am lazy, just so I'm just gonna copy and paste it like a real programmer. Let's go. <laughs> the thing is, um, hey, Giga is here as well. Yay! Oh, uh, this script is fairly similar to the one. Uh... <laughs> no, you can't do book jumps. This script is really similar to the video that Game Endeavor made, where you have, I think so at least, does that have tweens? It does not have tweens. Never mind, this is quite different. Shaking in excitement for screen shake. Were you hoping for me to program it, or are you disappointed that I just grab a script from the internet? Because this is quite a bit of work to get nice. 
<laughs> if you Google, um, there are a couple of different methods of adding screen shakes. Um, Game Universe videos is really nice, but in the kids can code example, it goes over a GDC talk that goes more in depth on screen shake, but I just don't like the way they do it. Like this, it has angular stuff. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, stream is going well, I think. <laughs> if it's the opposite, your code is now my property. Thank you. Yes. But this is one way of implementing screen shake. But well, I just really like the script and I keep coming back to it. I will also add a link to this. Um, Angular makes me squee queasy. Que I have never seen the word queasy. Sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> my, my face is in front of the... I won't pronounce that word on stream again. Here, this is the angular stuff that it just mm, it makes me wanna puke. Let's not do that. So let's cover it with my face again. <laughs> mm. Okay. So we have this massive Screen shake script. Let's save it. And mm, for this example, this stream, we're just going to call the screen shake function from the, the input function. But what you really want is in the explosion, you want to call the um, call the screen shake. Uh, I think I need water because my brain is kind of dead. <laughs> okay. Um, what you actually want is to call the screen shake function from the explosion and you want an um, auto load so you can just call that screen shake function from anywhere. But for now, we're just going to call it on the input. So this script is on the main node. So what we're just going to do is call the camera 2D and then I think it's called shake. This function, the shake function, which will we take in a duration, a frequency and an amplitude. So for the first parameter, which was duration, let's put in something like 0.3 seconds. My usual method of screen shake is grab the player by its head and then violently shake them. It's really immersive. Um, <laughs> Okay, um, I am getting distracted. Uh, then the next parameter is going to be frequency, which in this script I have used 50. 50 is good, apparently. 50, and then for the amplitude, 7. I have no clue what units these are, so... For my messing around, this should be good. I think that's it. Um, screen shake, yay! <laughs> it just adds so much to... Uh... Woo! 
I must say I'm not a big fan of how the debris looks right now. Let's tweak that a little. The debris lives on for a really long time, so let's increase the lifetime randomness. And it's lifetime, let's just set it back to one. Hmm. Maybe they now point three. Yeah, something like that. As you can see right now, the sprite is very static, those little lines. And they're small, but I should have changed that beforehand. <laughs> what I did for the other uh, one is... This animated sprite has... I think the, sp the sprites might... Bigger. Oh, I messed something up there. So sorry if that was really loud. Yeah, and here the lines are just bigger, the sprites are larger. In general, where is the Half-Life 2 example? These lines are really large. And in the one I've made right now, they're just too small. But there, again, are a replacement for sparks, because Godot's particle shift system is just bad with trails and and sparks. And maybe there's a fix with particle shaders? But... Oh, I'm so sorry! <laughs> I wasn't supposed to scare you. <laughs> um, which reminds me... The, the sound effects are next. But yeah, let's... This is really missing some sound effects. Let's add some sound effects. Let's add um, audio stream player. A regular audio stream player. Because for now we just want the audio to play um, ev on every single place on the screen equally. If you use an audio stream player 2D, it will have, um, if it's next to the one, uh, if it's to the right of the camera, it will fade more to the right speaker on your on your headphones and stuff. It's, it's positional. We don't want the audio to be positional right now. So let's add this. <laughs> okay. Um, um, audio, audio, yes. Um, actually, it's not that. It's, it's rather difficult to make, to ch um, scale up these explosions if you want to keep the, keep the sprite size. You, yeah. Hmm. Okay. It looks like a crossover between Modern Warfare and Duck Hunt. I am so tempted to make that game. That sounds like fun. Um, audio, I keep getting distracted. That means I'm getting tired and... Okay. My workflow for creating audio is... Okay, there's first... First, there's a thing I need to complain about. That which is... SFXR. SFXR is what a lot of people use for creating their sound effects in 8-bit games. Or pixel art games. I am not a big fan of that. I'm sorry. <laughs> The, the sound effects are nice, but those sound effects alone just make it very... Um, on the frequency spectrum, it just lives in one place. And it's just... it needs to be layered. You need to stack the layers. If anyone gets that reference from Aces to Aces, then... <laughs> Good job on you. Um, 
But what we are going to do is grab one of these sound effects and layer it with other real life sound effects to make it more juicy. So let's just use this one. I am so sorry if this is going to be loud. Oh, I can change the volume. In here, you have a bunch of presets, and we're going to be using the explosion presets. Let, I'm going to turn on the volume a bit on the stream in here. That is still really loud. Oh, red beatbox and jump box. Yes, I know those things, but I haven't tried them. Oh, it automatically resets the gain. Okay, then I'm gonna, just gonna turn down the volume on the stream. This one. I think I like this one. It's a nice rumble to it. Um, where is the download button? We need to grab this and then save it, save link as, and then let's put it in that folder of the project. <laughs> if I can find it, to the explosion live stream. Add a new folder called audio. You can't see it right now, but I am creating a new folder. <laughs> oh, we created, why this? We need to, which one do we need? This one, save link as, okay. X. I'm glad I'm not wearing headphones. I am sorry. Okay, what we have right now is this sound effect. Which is boring and I hate it. So <laughs> let's layer it with some sounds. Where did it go? Um. Let's drag it into Audacity. It's okay. You can see how simple the waveform is. Mouths are also good for to make explosion sounds on a budget time constraints. Yes. Actually, blowing into your microphone, which I won't do on stream right now, is also really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we're going to be using is a website called freesound.org. Um, uh, I get uh, so many sound effects from here, because if we just search for explosion, which I've already done before, and then we go into the Creative Commons Zero, which means it's uh, publicly available and you don't have to attribute anything. All these sound effects are just free to use for you, which are, um, yeah, public domain. As you can see from the waveform, these things are incredibly loud. Ooh, no Lucy ASMR stream. If you consider blowing into the microphone is ASMR, then <laughs> no, that's not calming at all. <laughs> Here, for example, what we talked about using your voice is, and blowing into the microphone, is uh, this explosion, for example. Made using Audacity, using white noise, and blowing into the microphone, combined and added reverb. Which works, but I'm gonna not gonna do right now. Mm, I think I have used. I kind of want to show these explosions. Wait, I think I can go to here. Sounds I've downloaded. 
I'm going to turn on turn on the sound. I'm sorry if. Okay, maybe take your headphones off if this is too loud. Okay, that's doable. According to OBS, at least. I've used this sound and this one. This one is more punchy. Well, this one is really large and has so much reverb. So all you need to do is just create an account, which is free, and you can just download so many Creative Commons sounds. Let's download it. And for the other explosion sound. Yeah. Let's also download it. Let's throw them in Audacity. The other one as well. Now we have this complete mess. Uh, can I drag this down, please? Yep. Let's remove the start stuff from here. Maybe let's throw delete it completely. I'm so sorry if that's really loud. <laughs> um, then we want to combine these sounds together. So I have picked if we solo this one. This one is really for the bass sound. Then for the mid range, we're going to be using this one, and we're going to turn on a little bit, because looking at the, the bar up here makes it really, really loud. This is going to be for the mid-range, and then this one is going to be filling up the higher frequencies a little bit more, to give it just that full sound. And what we're... Please don't do the ASMR in this stream. No, I won't. <laughs> but I am going to edit, edit this. That is so loud. Let me turn this up a little bit again. Going to turn this to make it more balanced. And then I'm going to select it all and then into effects. And we're going to be using the Equalization, and then in the curve, let's ba base boost it. Base boost. Now it's really punchy and low. <laughs> yes, I like that. And let's. Add this sound back again. Ooh, that's loud. We're going to add, because the initial punch happens here, we're going to remove that because um, most of it is already happening here and we don't need to happen have that to happen twice. Yeah, the pulse stretch plugin. I have indeed made something weird with that. It just, you can just really stretch out one sound into a really, yeah, drone. It's weird. Yeah, the new new owners of Audacity are uh, up to some weird shit for, um, weird shit, I'm sorry for my French. <laughs> um, they are collecting data on the new version of Audacity and which is cool, yeah, they hire Tentacruel. Tentacruel is like a very good addition to all open source music software, but I'm not sure what they're up to with all the data collection stuff. So I'm kind of looking for a replacement. I think um, Ardour or there are some, some other options, but Audacity, I'm just so used to Audacity. Am I destroying your ears, Game Endeavor? If so, I am sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, what we were doing is removing the first start of this. Then we're going to use the move tool to move this over a bit. And then we are going to select the first part of this to fade it in. So under effect, and let's fade that in. So it matches, it nicely transitions into this. Maybe if we even cut off a slight bit of this part, so it immediately starts into... Lucy swears, oh no, I am a gangster now, oh no. <laughs> Ardor is great. I am really curious about Ardor. Because I've seen some stuff that there is a demo and accounts, but it's a really long time ago. Or was that Reaper? Because aren't those like just uh, DAWs? Okay, um, I think this is sounding pretty juicy. Hello. Matt, why, Matt, why do you want to be in an explosion? <laughs> this, you repeated it. I, I am sorry, whoops. My brain is just a bit fried while streaming. Oh, there's a license for Reaper, but I usually for music, I use FL Studio and I guess I could do sound effects with that, with all the um, envelopes and automation, but Audacity is also nice. Only the visual and input things are just really outdated. This, this has Windows, 95 uh, vibes. I I wasn't even born back in 95. But <laughs> Let's add this sound to our explosion. Let's export a WAV file into the explosion live stream audio. Big explosion. Let's save it. Let's go. And let's drag it into the auto player. Is there, oh, I also considered uh, Audacity as just an audio editing software and not really an audio workstation like I mean, you can add VSTs in um, in Audacity, but you don't have um, well a general timeline, separate separate clips and stuff. You have all separate uh, separate patterns. Get serious now, old man! Oh no. <laughs> um, audio, big explosion. Let's drag it in and hopefully I won't destroy your ears. Okay. <laughs> I think you all survived. Means digital audio workstation. We should call Audacity by extension Tenacity. Also a DAW, which is needlessly audio, audio editor. Fair. Hmm. I always kind of made the, the distinction between one you can actually make music in, and I would consider that a DAW, and one you edit audio in. I've also heard good things about um, uh, um, the audio program by uh, Adobe. Audition. Audition? I think. 
But I am completely done with Adobe stuff. I'm, I don't like uh, subscription-based stuff. That is why I switched from Photoshop to Affinity stuff and all stuff. Windows 95 was the last time I owned and used Windows. Whoa. If we switch to Linux, I assume, since you're in the Godot community, I I see very not a lot of Linux um, Mac OS users. Adobe is evil. Um. I don't know, Adobe might be evil, but they also make good software. But on the other side, they add so many features that people don't need, and they never fix features that have existed since since the ancient times, CS2, CS3. And Photoshop might have added some sort of NFC button, which just, no thanks, I would just, I paid 27 euros for Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo with the, um, with the discount. And it's a lifetime license and the software is just so great. I've been using it for everything. It's so great. And for video editing, I use um, something that's really similar to Premiere. It was called HitFilm, HitFilm Express. I am really getting distracted by the conversation, but maybe we should finish this. <laughs> I happen to look after what's often considered the world's first digital audio inter uh, workstation. The Synthi one. 100, okay, I am curious. I'm sorry I am getting so distracted, but... Oh, wow. That looks really cool. It looks like, it looks like a modular synthesizer, sort of. But then, uh, so many knobs to play around with. <laughs> Yay, conversations are fun, yeah. Yeah, I also use Procreate on my iPad because I'm just not a big fan of using... Oh, I mean, they're nice, but these are so small and it just feels weird to draw in a place that is not under your pen, but in front of you. I mean, GIMP and Inkscape are cool. And they have so many features, but I'm, I personally personally really just prefer um, uh, Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo. Because in the end, they're just more similar to Adobe products. <laughs> in which, personally, I find the, the workflow in Inkscape just very confusing. It's so different, but like needlessly different from all the other world workflows. I am sorry if I say something stupid in English and it's not my native language. So if I say something, um, something dumb. <laughs> Gimp or Jim? No, no, that conversation is over. <laughs> Inkscape, yeah. Um, someone who is active in multiple Godot communities is, um, Ali Kangaroo, I think they changed their name a lot of times, but they're making really cool Godot games with, um, also with Inkscape and armatures, like 2D, 2D skeletons. It's all hardware.
My English is excellent. Oh, thank you. Okay, let's... I, I do kind of want to finish this thing, though. <laughs> let's just call um, on the other stream player. Let's call play. But for some... Wait, let's just test this out first. Let's remove this little stray guy from... Uh... By the way, you can hit uh, hold shift and then hit delete to not get this annoying pop-up. Um, okay. Hey. <laughs> the, I am so sorry if I destroyed your ears. I will turn down the volume a bit. I used Inkscape to make my logo, then never again. It was so confusing to work with. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the Inkscape workflow. I am, however, of the I love the, the um, Affinity Designer, which is basically you can follow a, um, Adobe Illustrator tutorial and then just translate it to um, Affinity Designer, but you can't really do that with um, Inkscape. Yeah, it's kind of annoying. Same with the 3D software for a while. It has been the industry standard for so long, but then Blender is finally there to prove a point that it does really work with open, so open source software in, um, in big companies. Get back to work. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what do you guys think about this? We need some audio variation. So... In the audio string player, before we play it, let's... Go on to the audio... Also complete, please. Audio string player dot uh, pitch fill. And we will set it to a random range between... Mm, 0 0.8 and 1.2. So we just grab a value that is around the 1. But every time we... Okay, maybe the range is a bit weird. Sometimes they're really low and sounds a bit weird. I love it. Great pop. I almost wish there was a little bit more crackle, though. <laughs> Data joins in and says, looks like business is booming. Oh, yeah. I guess you could say it's really exploding. Yes. Yes, we have now randomized the pitch. And three invaders one for the good old jam one. I also use the random pitch for for explosions. I am not sure if is is YouTube going to kick people if they post links, because if you want to share that game, the three invaders. You know what? I could just look it up. Uh, let's go to the full events and then submissions and three invaders. Oh, I think I've seen this one though. Can I play it? Pitch shifting, Minecraft, yes. <laughs> oh, lasers, they have. 
<laughs> you have to destroy- Whoa! Okay, wait, what do I have to do? Hey, there is a- Do I- Do I- What do- Do I just kill everything? <laughs> but again, what do you mean? You have also a change the- The pitch for explosion. Okay, maybe I shouldn't be gaming on stream, but this is- Oh no! Good job, that's cool game. <laughs> this game uses stylized explosions to, to be made less distracting. Yeah, that's, that's nice. Because these explosions we've just made... Ooh, they grab your attention. <laughs> Someone says good luck and then something in Russian. I have no idea what that means, but thank you. Okay, um... What else do you guys want? Uh, oh, by the way, can you once again tell me how for how long I've been streaming? Wait, I can just look at the clock. It has been f almost two hours, hasn't it? No, I'm not going to be playing Fortnite. <laughs> Fighting game with the hit sparks are these explosions. That's a lot of explosions. <laughs> oh, okay, you can go to watch other videos. 88 minutes, 111 minutes. How, how long is that? My brain is a little bit too fried to do... Um, to talk. Oh no, the, the theme of the jam hasn't been the even been decided yet, so <laughs> Data he wants me to play Halo, but no. Uh, 120 minutes is two hours, so almost two hours, yeah. Maybe I could just also look at the clock, because we started in my time at 7 p.m. And it's now almost 9 p.m. So I think maybe I should be ending it. <laughs> Have you considered developing a game with someone? Yes. Oh, oh, I maybe I could just end the stream off with showing some stuff. Next to explosions. <laughs> there are explosions in Halo, but I also have explosions in my weird game. Okay. Oh, I still have the map open. I should tweak some things. So, shall we just consider this project done for now? I will. I will put it on GitHub, and you can. You guys can check it out. And yeah. <laughs> what other tutorials do you plan next? I am not sure. I kind of want to get more into live streaming because it, it's a lot of fun to talk with you all. Yeah, mm, I want to show you some things. Let's consider this done and let's close it.
I will put that on GitHub and I will close this. This game is cool. Go check it out. It's from last year's jam, not last, last uh, GoGo Joe jam. And what I wanted to show you is this project. Okay, gotta go. It was nice to meet y'all. Have a great day. Have a great day. Goodbye. See you later. Okay, what I wanted to show is this video game. So, mm, there are ghosts, and you just shoot them, and that's basically all I've added. But... Uh, <laughs> what I wanted to show off is the explosions, but gotta get rid of these guys first. So, these explosions are inspired by um, The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. As you can see from the particle shapes alone, it's quite similar. But what really helps in 3D games um, is that extra light that you get with an explosion. It illuminates the scene and due to glow, um, it also really over brightens the image in front of you. So that really sells the impact. Since you mentioned, shader, mentioned particle shaders, would you live stream you playing around with it and learning it. Oh, that would be fun. I wouldn't be up for that. Just playing around with particle shaders and learning about them. But I kind of want to keep the YouTube streams to um, more organized and with a clear plan of what I want to do. Like this stream focused on um, creating and finishing those explosions. And on Twitch, I kind of want just want to stream um, just me having fun <laughs> and me, me uh, having weird conversation with Matt. It gives you the ability to use 3D lighting even in 2D. Yes, um, that was also thinking like you could add, really add that to the, um, I don't know how performed that would be. But if you add those 2D shaders and 2D lighting in, in your 2D games, and also just add a light to the explosion, just as it explodes, you kind of get the same effect as uh, as this. Just one quick bright white flash, and then it fades away. That would also be cool in 2D. But yay, explosions. One other thing that the person in the comments of dance video talks about is um, is a smaller well you could read this for yourself but it starts with a big explosion that could, and then it goes small for the implosion and then explodes big that also sells a lot of adds a lot of impact and what I've done eh, hello <laughs> goodbye um, what I've done here, where do these ghosts keep coming from? Goodbye. What I've added here is a really, really small delay of like a couple hundred of hundreds of a second, not these hundreds of a seconds, tens of a second before it explodes. As you can see, it's like that also adds some nice impact. And if we regenerate the level, by the way, this is procedurally generated, but I just never really finished the project. And we then look at some barrels next to each other. I can find some. Oh, there, okay. Let's get rid of these guys. You can see that if we explode this one, no, whoa, God. Oops, I think it crashed. I. Anyway, what happens is one barrel explodes and then it takes like a really short amount of time for the other barrel to explode. But then it, it's so much easier for the player to read what's happening. And you can also like, I think, Gangplank in um, League of Legends, you can just chain those explosions and has a do 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 do. Maybe I can 
find some. Hmm. Like this. Do do. So there's a delay when I hit the barrel. It has a really small delay before it explodes to add some, and then um, another small delay. Yeah, the rocket launcher is slightly overpowered. Go snipping your ears, yes. Okay, um... Let's go back to the project manager. And what I actually want to do talk about is those explosions, but also the particle systems on them. And I have another old project. If I can find it. Um... Can you guys see this in full screen? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's not a bad game. Maybe combine forces with another dev to make something with it. Yeah, I could. I um oh oops. Uh okay. Maybe yeah, maybe maybe I should actually finish games. But I will show you one game I've made together with Matt, who's in chat right now. That is one of the few projects I actually work together with someone. But what I wanted to show is the, the same rocket launcher, but in here. As you can see, it has multiple elements. It has, I think, three different particle systems. It has that circular shape. Then it has a ring shape that goes outwards as it like a changing size donut thing. <laughs> These assets give me Kenny vibes. Yeah, I guess, because they're a little bit bright and happy for these murderous weapons. Um, but then I also have the debris particles. So it's actually very similar to um, what we've created in 2D. But then in 3D. <laughs> also, what you can see is the same particle that what we did is the big white circle in the center that is only there for like a couple of frames. I've also did that here, but then with a big star. It's kind of hard to see, but from certain angles, is a, for a couple of frames, there's a big star and that really sells the impact. The grass looks like Animal Crossing, or, I mean, it's green. <laughs> also, this, uh, this is a video game. Let's continue. So I think I'm going to end this stream off with just showing a game I've worked. This has nothing to do with explosions, by the way, but I'm just going to show the game uh, Matt and I have that Matt and I have been working on, and that will be um, one of the last things because my voice is starting to hurt. <laughs> okay, it's a multiplayer. Wait, OBS, please. Um, the comments Data is making is like he was waiting in real life in front of my door while I was live streaming. I muted my phone and he just stood there in front of my door. I didn't know he was there. <laughs> I still kind of feel bad. Um, for some reason, I can't show the game. OBS is not showing anything. Oh, it's going black. Oh, it showed it for a couple. Huh? Okay, why? I'm having some technical issues. 
Oh, hey, wait a second. I think I fixed it. So... Huh? Whoa, wait. It's... The stream is bugging out. <laughs> Poor Matt will not get his five minutes of fame. <laughs> no. Um... I think... Window capture... It's not working! Why is it... It's frozen, but I can't... I can't play it on my screen. Huh? Only when I unfocus the window, I... Well, this is not working well. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Matt. I can't hear it. I'm playing it right now, but it's just not showing up. Oh, yes, the, those are legs. Those are definitely legs. <laughs> You know what? I'm just gonna open it up in here. Maybe I should let Godot load before I change anything. And let's go into window, full screen, and let's turn that off. And let's go back to this. Yes, video game time. Woo. Okay. Is it also jittery for you guys? Because there is a problem with Godot and um, and my high refresh rate monitor that all kinematic bodies and cameras kind of jitter because of something. Does it look good on stream or? Because on my screen it's super jittery, but only the character, the world is kind of okay. But yeah, this is a video game Matt and I made. There are bouncy pads. There is death. <laughs> Insta death. There is. Oh, whoops. If I can go into the launcher. And whee! Yes, this is actually the second part. Oh, yes. Um... <laughs> All hail Godot. Don't question the walking animation. It's amazing. <laughs> you guys are not seeing Jitter. That's really interesting. Oh, yeah, because it might be because uh, it runs at 30 frames a second. Oh, no. I died again. But we've been messing with so much stuff like grappling hooks, which are comp completely made with um, with mathematics. <laughs> Whee! Like this game and the first part of this game, the first one was actually made in Unity. And then I was like, haha, I use Godot now. And we remade the entire thing and we actually made it um, split screen multiplayer. And, oh, whoops. And we've just been having fun, so much fun with all of these things. Like, this is my part of the level that is just so frustrating, frustrating to do. Am I. <laughs> I almost did it first try. That is a really, really hard section of the level. I am not going to do that right now. Hello from Russia. Hello, Russia. <laughs> Wee. Okay. Um. There are so many. This level is like. Massive. We've been having so much fun with level design. Maybe Matt designed some really cool uh, sections for this game. 
like you slide and you go down and then you go here and then you slide you go here then you slide go here speed run oh i'm actually doing it why is it so going so well this time <laughs> you go here and jump Wow, that might have actually been one of my fastest time in the ice section. How do you make responsive controls? With inputs or a physics events or um, the input function? I think it's equally fast. It's always kind of confusing where to put your input. I usually kind of mix the two. For the input function, is it? It's really useful because you can have unhandled inputs and handled, or uh, just the input function. Unhandled input is input that has not been processed by UI elements. For example, if you scroll over a scroll box a UI container, uh, it will be processed by the UI container, and it won't be able to use it in the input function or the unhandled input function anymore, because it has been handled somewhere else. That makes it useful. If you have a 3D game and you want to zoom out, uh, you can use your hover your, your mouse over uh, the 3D model you want to zoom out. But if you scroll down on the menu on the side, for example, if you have a software similar to Blender, you want to scroll down a menu, but you don't um, simultaneously simultaneously zoom out the 3D model. So then you can use the unhandled input function. You can use getTree is input handled in the process method. Oh, apparently you can also use that. <laughs> By the way, game just game endeavor is game endeavor tutorials are good because this entire player controller is just mostly made out of uh, game endeavors tutorials, which are just really great. The player controller, the state machine. Everything is from those tutorials mostly. And then Matt and I add, added, a, added sliding, which is what I'm going to show right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, we have checkpoints and then you can press these buttons to set the checkpoints for player one and player two. This looks more fancy than anything I could create ever create. No game and ever no no you no. <laughs> You've also made so much cool stuff, and you have enabled so many game developers to make also make cool stuff. And yes, <laughs> um, but yes, video game. Uh, now start here and switch over to single player mode. You can slide, whee! Oh yeah, you die there. Oh no, I forgot we add added the... Um, this is like an incredibly difficult. This entire game is incredibly difficult, by the way, because Matt and I made it, and we made it for, uh, well, our, our level of knowledge about this game. So it's really hard for a new player to play this game. <laughs> I am... This is not fun, Matt, why? <laughs> but yeah, you can slide and it will rotate towards the... the vector of the... or the normal of the vector it hits. Um. <laughs> I am stuck here again. Do the jump. No, Matt, I am not going to do that. <laughs> I'm a beginner with Godot, but, ha Godot, but I have the feeling that the best place to handle inputs is the un unhandled input. If you put input handled before, I don't want other things to happen, like scroll, for example. Yeah. Depends on what kind of game you're making. 
if you're going to add a bunch of UI into your game that requires scrolling, then it's probably going to be good to use that. Matt, no, I have been streaming for over two hours. My voice is really dead, but we can do that on Twitch. Matt and I usually use Parsec, where you can use um, two computer people can go on one computer, and then we can use the split screen to play multiplayer together. And maybe that would be fun to show this entire game to everyone on Twitch. This is Bennett 40 levels hard. Yeah, except for the narration. <laughs> Matt is a good narrator. Matt, yes. Maybe we just need Matt to um, <laughs> to do the voice acting. No, Matt and I are both from the Netherlands. We're Dutch. Nederlands. <laughs> Well, yeah, we've had... Um, Game Endeavor says that there are some instances where you need to have inputs regardless of how it's handled. Both are useful. Unhandled inputs is generally good for player controls, though. Ah, fair, yeah. Yes, thanks to the cool d uh, tutorials by Game Never, um, these characters also have coyote time and a jump buffer. So there are a couple frames before uh, you land on the ground that you can also hit the jump jump button and you will still jump. And um, after you fall off of, uh, something, uh, you will also have a couple of frames in which you can still jump. That adds so much to a platformer game, really, like. Um, another game I have made, uh, let's just go here. This game that I've made for the Game Endeavor Jam, a bunch of Game Endeavor, <laughs> um, it doesn't have jump buffer. So if I fall over here, um, it's really hard to demonstrate, but yeah. Right there, I fell off and I tried to jump, and then it's so frustrating. One of my videos that I really liked the, the Kyoto Time and Jump Buffer. Yes, it's so good. And I. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, thanks, Google Chrome. It crashed. Um, I have been playing um, Super, Mood, Super Meat Boy a while back. Uh, and I don't think Super Meat Boy has Jump Over or Coyote Time. And I played that after playing um, Celeste. It just feels so sluggish or frustrating when you just hit the jump button, but it's just really that precise. You have to be on the ground to jump. I don't know what's happened. This sometimes happens, and I don't know if it happens to other people, but if you can figure the lore behind this, I'm sorry, if I, if they tell me. This has happened more often to me, especially when I make 3D games in Godot and then export them to the, the HTML5. They always crash like this, and it's kind of spectacular, but I also don't want to trigger anyone's uh, epilepsy. Uh, maybe because of my JavaScript background, I prefer to use unhandled inputs when the top elements uh, catch the input. It's not bubbling up. I mean, it makes sense what you're saying. There's a secret messages in... Uh, I wonder what these are. 
Are they? They're just a bunch of screaming faces. <laughs> <laughs> this is the secret message. <laughs> yes, it is. This is... This is Jeff. He's the creator of the universe. No, he's not sus. But has this happened to any of you before? Because I have have had this happen like quite a few times. Do you do game development solely as a hobby or is there any connection to your job? Um, I'm still in school, but I am studying game development. But what I actually kind of want to do as a job is a job not behind my computer for like three days in a week and then work on YouTube, streaming and well, game development in the other days that I do not work. That would just be so great. Just being able to do game development without the restriction of having to go to school or having to work five days a week. And also not being, not sitting behind a computer and actually having an, an income that is also really good. <laughs> you have n never seen that. I hope, I really hope my graphics card is not dying. I had my uh, RTX 2070 die on me before. It fried its own graphics, graphical memory. And the graphical glitches like these just were getting worse and worse, mainly in Overwatch. It started with all sorts of vertices of the 3D models being displaced in the game due to them not being correctly stored on a, a graphical memory of the graphics card. And then it just slowly just died. The glitches became worse and worse, and then it just gave up. <laughs> I had to return it, and now I have a different 2017. <laughs> I just don't want it to die. <laughs> <laughs> Their good new graphics card is so hard to get. It looks like you're being hacked. Yep. Come to Brazil. <laughs> um. It's not really scary. It's not spooky. It's scary. I found my player sprites for this jam. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the last part of the stream that I have been... I've been dragging this out a little bit longer than I uh, expected. Than I have... English, sorry. Nvidia killed mine with its patch, and even when I reinstalled the drivers, it stayed dead. Then like a week they released an update, and now it works a year later? Ooh. It must be scary when you install something and you just can't use it anymore, and you have to rely on a big company just to fix their drivers. Couldn't you just use an older driver? <clears throat> Oh, my voice. <laughs> Do you guys want to see me speedrun my own game? This is made in Godot, so it's still relevant.
Come to Brazil, it would be nice introducing some waterfalls to you guys. <laughs> Okay, watch this. <laughs> Let's go for the speed run. Nine seconds. Let's go. Next one. Oh no, I messed it up. By the way, this this ties in in what we've been talking about earlier. I have um, those little d -d 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 -ding sounds. I layered those with an SFXR sound, like a little bling, but then I layered it with a coin flip, someone flipping a coin from freesounds.org. And it created this really nice and crisp... Just, I really like that sound effect, how it turned out. Oh no, I... Mess it up again. Oh well, seven seconds is good enough for now. Okay, whoops. Nine seconds. Spoiler, this is the Blue Deer. The Blue Deer has so much lore. I have ri written like multiple pages about the, all the lore behind the master cubes, the the blue deer that is the soul of the blue master cube. That is a story that I am not going to tell right now, but yes, say hello to the blue deer. Yay. Okay, there is a trick with this level. Um, you can actually shoot the enemies beforehand, but if that you shouldn't die. Okay, you go down, shoot these two, and okay, wait, let me restart. Shoot these two, and then you go in here. You can actually beforehand kill a couple of enemies, and then grab the power up, and then you fall down. And you kill them all. Yay! I thought you had to kill the blue deer. Yes! No! Don't kill the blue deer. The blue deer is... Hey, thanks for following me on... Following me on Twitch. Even though I am on YouTube. Um... Platformer tutorial, please. Go to Game Endeavor. Game Endeavor has a freaking amazing platformer tutorial. This is also um, the platformer controller, the player controller from his tutorials. It's just so good. <laughs> okay, last level. What you can do is die, apparently. <laughs> this, by the way, I was talking about the Yoti time and jump buffer. Um, you can really, really feel that here because I died, but I pressed jump, and with Kyoto time, it would have just wouldn't have happened. You can actually already s shoot the boss here, and I'm whoop, ball run. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have to get the power up, but okay, shoot the big guy. Shooting. The power up, kill these guys, and then you kill the boss. Okay, 52 seconds. It is not great, but I think I have managed to... I should have a screenshot of that somewhere. Uh... Hmm, I can't find the screenshots. But there was a time I got more than 60 
seconds. Like 62. That's my high score. Try to beat that. <laughs> Try to beat me at my own game. I can't find it. The music is nice too. Thank you. How long did you work on it? it? I spent a week and a half on this and so much crunch time and that was a week late. Like the, the, the Game Endeavor Jam was a week, then the, um, there wasn't, there was really a soft deadline of a week. So I spent another half of a week to finish it. And um, it wasn't good for my wrist. All the crunch time. <laughs> Challenge the audience to do better. Yes, yes. Like I said, it beats me at my own game. It's it's on my itch hype that I O page. Yes, fifty two seconds. By the way, quick tip for those people who are um, seeing these text, this text being cut off. The um, the outline, crunchy wrist, wrist. I don't think you can hear it. No. But the outline is cut off on the top of these letters. It was fun though. The jam was so much fun. Okay. Enough of that video game. Well, you lost a millisecond. I will never be, no, I will never be a speedrunner. I am way too stressed for those things. I'm, um, what was I gonna show? Oh yeah, um, a quick tip about the, um, about the outlines. Oh, game and never love the entry, yay. Nice, thank you. <laughs> Joel's game was also really nice. The Celeste-inspired climbing game. You sound like an epic gamer. Gamer moments. I have I have gamer headphones. That's that's about it. I don't have R RGB anywhere except on my gra graphics card. Um, I was going to share a quick tip on the, on the outlines. Um, in Rival Renegade 2. Oh wait, this is Rival Renegade. Oh, spoilers. Oh no, <laughs> I am working on the second second part of the game. Um, but what you can do on... Um, here, this is a good example. If I go into the UI... Mm -hmm. Where is the label? Time label. As you can see, this is the the box in which these the text the rich text table. Uh, oh no, I spoiled it. Oh, it's kind of I kind of wanted to keep it a secret, but I am dumb. Whoops. <laughs> what are your reasons to switch from Unity to Godot? In fact, I didn't. I use both. I use both Unity and Godot for the task the engine is better at. For example, for my internship right now, I'm working on an app which needs camera input, uh, GPS input, and some other extra features that are just way easier to do and better supported inside of Unity. So I use Unity for that project. But for platformers and indie games, Godot is really perfect. Celeste is also a mountain climbing game inspired by Celeste. Oh wait, yeah, of course you have the um, Pico 8 game. But yeah, what that was going on about is that you have the rich text label 
And if you set an outline on the font, it will be cut off at the top. That is outside of the, the bounding box. But what I recently found out is that there is this little toggle inside of the rect, um, rectangle part of a control node called clip content. If you turn that off, it will no longer clip these annoying um, outlines. So like that's the that's the biggest improvement in the second part of the game. <laughs> no more cut off text. 2D Godot, 3D Unity. To be honest, I also use Godot for a lot of 3D stuff. Oh man, I have so many things I can show, but my, it's, I have been streaming for too long. My voice is dying. <laughs> um, like Godot is also just really nice for 3D. Like this piece of software I've been, I was working on, but I got bored, is like a 3D tile map inspired by a program called uh, Crocotile. And Godot is just really, really intuitive with 3D, but there's just so many missing features. But for a 3D software like these, it's just perfect because it's rather simple and it just works. <laughs> But for realistic stuff, you you don't don't go with Godot. I'm sorry. It's just the lighting, the light baking, the. I mean, Godot 4.0 is going to solve a lot of issues. I'm really curious how much of a shift in the industry is going to happen when Godot 4.0 releases. But yeah, just for realistic games, Godot is. I mean, yeah. Hmm. Gerudo 3 is... I mean, it's good for those games I showed it that are like a PlayStation 1 style graphics. Graphics. Um, oh, also, a thing that this thing has is normal mapping. I made normal mapping stuff. So depending on which side you have shadows, can see that the lighting is different. You can see there is a highlight on the edge here. It's a normal map, it's pixel art, yay! Also, there are tiles with glow. Whoops. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> I am curious how much Godot 4.0 is going to fix it. Because I think we might have to wait until Godot 4.1 to have all the features that uh, like a full 3D game or well, a really realistic 3D game needs. Because Falcon and SCFGI and the... Um, um, I guess there are a lot of things that make 3D development a lot better in Godot 4.0. Uh oh, I've sparked a big conversation in the comments. <laughs> there are also so many nice 3D games that don't require photorealism. Yes, which is true, but there are a couple of things Godot 4.0 has, like an LOD, level of detail system, that is just really required for making a larger, even stylized game. Don't show up all your cool stuff at once. But so tempting. <laughs> But okay, I won't. For another stream, I will show more, I guess. <laughs> uh, 
Every time I see your low res 3D, I want to make a cute voxel game. Give whatever, go for it. Yes. It's... Link for the measures software plus. Um, it is broken, really broken. And I have never really finished it. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, people are saying goodbye. Um, I think I might go, but Shadows in Godot three sucks. True, and they're fixing it. Godot the and the anti banding, and all the um, shadow bias stuff that the, the shadow doesn't fully connect to where the object hits the ground. They're all gonna be fixed soon. But okay, <laughs> my voice. I think I am going to keep it at this. Um, should we just end it? Because this was so much fun. Also, the the more. The, all the conversations at the at the end, it's just yay. <laughs> mm. Oh yeah, I am going to eat something. And even if you're still watching now, go check out the Go Godo Jam too. Go look at the funds. It's already at four hundred and forty eight dollars for the Godo. Uh, the development. Future videos. Yes, okay. Mm. Go, 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 damn Joe. So, yes, okay. Goodbye. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in next stream and probably the other events of the Go Go Jam too. Goodbye. <laughs> I'm sorry to cut off the chat, but I really need a break.